Good evening, everybody. Welcome to DU Wednesday webinars. I'm Sharon Bond with Parent and Family Engagement. Today, we're presenting student financial support. Your presentation today will be from Janet Burkhart, Director of Student Financial Services, and Lindsay Patton, Manager of Communications and Community Relations is in Housing and Residential Education. The presentation will be about 20 minutes, then we'll use the rest of our time together to answer your questions. When it's time for your questions, you can use that Q&A feature on your screen, which is usually down on the bottom right. What you type isn't going to be viewed by all of today's um, attendees, so we'll read your question aloud before we provide the answers. The webinar is being recorded and will be emailed to all of you, posted on the parents' Facebook group, and also posted on our website, which is go.du.edu slash parents. So with that, let's get started with Janet Burkhart from Student Financial Services. Hi, good evening, everyone. I just, uh, first I wanna say thank you and for attending and welcome to the webinar. I also wanna say that uh, you and your students have been absolute rock stars this year in completing those um, financial agreements because um, so many of them were done before registration and that was really helpful for everyone involved. So a little bit about student financial services, just to distinguish um, what my department does as opposed to student financial aid because it's a very different aspect of the university. Student financial services includes the Bursar's office. You'll become intimately familiar with us because you will be sending bills we also manage payment plans, and if there's any refunds due to excess financial aid, those come out of um, the Bursar's office. Student financial services also includes the Pioneer ID card office, where your students will be getting their ID cards, their college bus passes, and when they start to travel, they can get their international student ID cards. And we also have two cashiers who just love to chat with people, and those are in case your student wants to make an in-person payment, or if you happen to be in town and you just love to come and see us, we will always take your cash and checks at the window. Um, I like to always tease my colleague in financial aid that he gives things and I take them away. So um, it's just an easy way for everyone to remember what we do. So a couple of things you can do before your student arrives on campus that will make life easier for them and for you. So the first thing is to set up do you pay. Do you pay is the place to view and pay bills. It's where you can set up payment plans. And it's also later in the year where you view um, 1098 tax information. And those tax forms help you determine if you're eligible for a tax credit. So the students are the drivers as far as this is concerned and they have access immediately as students. If you want um, them to give you access, they have to do that. So I used to tell my college students, my children, if you'd like me to pay the bill, you have to let me see the bill. So it's a very easy um, process for them to go through. They log on to Do You Pay through Pioneer Web. They can set up an authorized user. Once they set you up as an authorized user, they'll need your, um, use, their, your um, email address. You will get an email address, well, an email welcoming you to Do You Pay, and then you'll get a second email with your temporary password. Please note that those passwords do expire after a certain time frame. So if you get the email in the morning and you decide that evening to go ahead and log on, your temporary password may have expired by then. So authorized users have an, their own separate world on Do You Pay from these students, you can set up your own payment information so your checking account can be there and they, your students can't see it and neither can any other authorized user. The nice thing about being an authorized user is that when bills are posted, you get an email and the students get an email. There's no, you don't have to ask your student, did you get a bill? When are bills coming out? You'll know if you're an authorized user. And then you can also, as I said, you can set up payment methods that are stored and visible only by each user. You can also schedule payments there. Um, students can access Do You Pay via Pioneer Web. Authorized users access DU Pay via du.edu slash bursar. There's right at the 
top of our webpage is a make a payment quick link and we've tried to give you a clue in that it has a giant green dollar sign on it. Um, so it's pretty easy to get to DU Pay. Since your students have already registered, fall bills will be generated and posted on August 1st, and those bills are due on August 22nd. If you'd like to set up a payment plan, as soon as your bill appears on DU Pay, you can go ahead and um, start that process. So um, how do you pay? That's an important question. Um, do you pay again is our electronic payment portal that is the preferred method it's the quickest method and as soon as you make a payment on do you pay and it goes through the payments are credited in real time so that comes in handy let's say if there is a financial hold on the student account come registration time if a payment is made that um, payment gets reflected and we can release the hold immediately you can set up again your payment plans. We offer um, three payment plans and those are always due. Those due dates are the 15th for the payment plans rather than the pay in full 22nd of the month. Um, checks can be mailed directly to DU. We are happy to take cold hard cash. You can send wires. It's very important to note that credit card payments are not accepted. That's a board policy. Um, so just so you want to start preparing for that. And if you have any needed any additional information or um, you have any questions that maybe we don't cover here, you can always find information at du.edu slash bursar. We try and make it very easy for you to find out um, information about our operation. What else can you do? You can help your students choose an ID photo. You can, um, they can be uploaded via Pioneer Web. Our Pioneer ID card staff will go through those photos, make sure they're acceptable. Please make sure your students don't have on hats, sunglasses, making funny faces. I prefer that there's no um, profane gestures. <laughs> those, will be, those will be rejected. Um, but that way we can get those cards pre-printed and they will be in the welcome packet when you and your students get to campus for discoveries. I can tell you if you don't do it, those lines can be up to an hour and a half long. And I know you'd rather spend your time on campus, unpacking boxes, or just seeing what life is gonna be like for your student rather than standing in line waiting for an ID photo. The ID card is basically your student's key to life on campus. It provides resident hall access. It helps them swipe in for their meal plans. It gives them gym access and it does a bunch more. If they ever like want to check out a, be you know, just old fashioned and check out a book at the library, it helps them do that. Um, so there are some fun things that they can do. They can also use it for printing. Um, the UID card can be linked to a U.S. bank account. There is a U.S. bank branch on campus, and then it'll function as a pin-based debit card. That is completely a decision up to you and your students. They're not pre um, they're not pre-activated. We won't force you into that. Students still can get refunds if you decide that you're going to stick, if you're a Wells Fargo family and you're sticking with Wells Fargo, you have a credit union you love, you don't have to take that U.S. bank account, but it is available for you. Um, also, as part of your discoveries packet, you as parents, family members will receive a reference card, and we find this comes in really handy. At the On the front, it'll look like a ID card and it'll have your student's name and ID number because whenever you call somebody at the university, that will be the first thing they ask for. And then on the back side, we've listed frequently contacted offices with their phone numbers and their websites. Again, if you need more information about the DU ID cards, the upload process, you can go to du.edu slash pioneer card. Um, one of the other things that the Bursar's office does is we manage health insurance plan payments. So determine if your student is covered by your health insurance plan and if you want to keep that going. Um, if it is, your students have to waive the health insurance coverage. We initially charge everyone and then students have the option to waive their health insurance. Um, please note that if your student doesn't waive their health insurance by September 27th, you will be charged for that plan and possibly your student will be double covered. Um, rest assured, we will send plenty of reminders to your student if they don't 
complete the waiver process. So they will get regular emails from us, um, gently nudging them to complete that process. Um, if you don't have, uh, your student isn't covered by your health insurance plan or you'd rather take the DU plan, then all you need to do is go on and have your student accept in health insurance coverage, we will be send, we'll send information to the carrier and then the carrier will send you ID cards. So once the student accepts health insurance, everything else kind of just happens automatically based on our relationship with the, um, the carrier. And insurance can be waived and accepted on Pioneer Web. Your students will become intimately familiar with Pioneer Web. That, that kind of is their link into everything that they do at the university. And the waive accept health insurance link can be found on the student tab in the advising and registration tools section. So we're here to help you. We would rather hear earlier rather than later that maybe there's some problem. There's a you're having a problem with your 529 plan and they won't be able to get the check to us until August 30th or September 5th. Just call us and let us know that. We'd, like I said, we'd rather know earlier rather than later. We can make a note on your account and know that it's coming. Um, we have staff available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And the main phone number is listed on the slide, 871-4494, and the area code is 303. You can also send an email if you don't have time to call during our business hours. Someone is, one of my staff members will be answering those emails within a day. That uh, somebody's job and I get cranky when it doesn't happen. So rest assured, no one wants a cranky Janet. Um, and then we post regular announcements to du.edu slash bursar. There's also an announcement section on du pay. And if there's something really, really important, we are members of the du parents and family Facebook page. And so we'll put reminders out there. Our registration is coming up. If we're noticing a lot of questions are coming into the office, we try and put out you know, information that says, oops, we may not have gotten our information right the first time. Here's something you need to know about our office. So um, we're really here to help. Um, I hope most of you have gotten the packet that we sent to you with all kinds of inserts. We sent an important date because I'm the kind of mom who likes to have things on um, her refrigerator so I sent lots of inserts that you can put on your refrigerator some important dates another good thing to have on the refrigerator I just love I just love refrigerator things um, so and there's some billing information in there too and if those if the questions aren't covered by the inserts please feel free to um, call the office and ask questions of the advising staff so that's all I have for right now. I'm happy to answer um, questions when we're all said and done. I don't know that I see any right now. Okay, and there are the main numbers for the Bursar's office and for the Pioneer ID card office. Um, oh, somebody raised their hand. Sharon's gonna help me. Let's, let's go ahead and um, um, finish up with Lindsay's um, presentation as well. Okay. And um, then we'll go to questions right after that. Sound good? Sounds great. Okay. And uh, now we're going to hear from Lindsay Patton from Housing and Residential Education. Hello, everyone, and thank you again, just to echo what Janet said, for taking the time to sit here with us and um, listen to what we have to share with you all. Um, my portion is significantly shorter than Janet's, so um, we will get to the questions rather quickly. So um, basically, our portion of this webinar really just kind of focuses on ways students can start to financially advocate for themselves and, and start to support themselves financially while at DU and kind of the role that housing and residential education or HRE as, as we love our acronyms here at DU, that's what we call it, um, and just kind of that role that we play in that student's process. So first and foremost, I just wanted to go through kind of some student positions that we have that is really, a lot of students are really drawn to these positions partially for the compensation, but also it's just a great way for them to get involved, as at least that's what we've seen from our students. So um, first and foremost, we have our resident assistant position or the RA position. Um, this is probably our most popular position just for the compensation. Um, 
when we start the RA hiring process around early to mid January, when we push out the application for um, or the RA application, when students who are interested can apply, and then we kind of go through the um, month-long hiring process, which involves um, information sessions and kind of group setting interviews and then individual interviews and things like that. Um, and then we make our decisions and send those out to students around mid to late February before the room selection process starts for the next year so that students know kind of what's going to happen if they need to apply for housing and things like that. Um, so the biggest compensation for the RAs that they receive is uh, their room and board, but we always like to remind students that it's not the quote unquote free room and board that everybody talks about. Um, we assure them that they do in fact work for, for that compensation. It is, it is a great job to have, um, having been an RA here myself, uh, it was amazing, but you definitely do put in the work for it. So we just like to remind students of that. Um, and part of that RA role is working at the front desk of the building where they are an RA for a set number of hours per week. Um, and any shifts taken outside of that set number is paid to the students. So it's definitely something to keep in mind for any students who are thinking about applying to the NRA. I know it's a little early, especially for our incoming first years, but we've had a lot of students who are like, no, I know I want to be an RA uh, after my first year. How do I go about doing it? So we love to let them know all of that information as, as early as possible. Um, and it's definitely something to keep in mind for anybody who's starting to navigate college and budgeting and, and all of those fun things. Um, and then the next position that um, is probably our next popular position, I guess you could say, um, is our desk assistant position or the DA position. Um, so desk assistants work at any of our residence hall front desks. We have six of them right now. Um, and they work for an hourly rate. Even though they don't receive that room and board, they're still paid at an hourly rate. It's not something that's, you know, you work and that's it. Um, and so, so that's nice for students who maybe can't commit to the RA position because they are, you know, our STEM majors seem to be like, no, I'd rather just be a DA and kind of set my schedule and things like that. So it, it depends on kind of the student and, and what they're interested in. Um, in addition to being paid that hourly rate, uh, DAs also have the option to pick up shifts either at their home desk, as I like to call it, for their coworkers, or at any other HRE desk that's across campus. If, if it's needed, then they'll send it out to all DAs to see if anybody can pick up that shift. And having our front desks open 24 seven, there's ample opportunity for students to pick up those shifts. And the nice thing too, is that they get to select what desk shifts they work each quarter. So it's nice for them to kind of build their work around their schooling. Um, and I think that's why we see a high number of applications for those positions. Um, and the other nice thing for the desk assistant position is that students who have work study can apply for it and have their work study funds go towards that position. And if students don't have work study, you know, as much as we'd love to be able to give all of our students work study, it's not the reality. Um, but we still like to be able to have that opportunity for students who maybe just want to make some extra cash or are trying to figure out, you know, how do I help pay for college or pay for my stuff on my own. So, so we kind of have those, those options for our students. Um, and the other component that we wanted to talk about was just room assignments and room selection. Um, so I'm sure most of you and your students have already looked at the room rates for the 1920 academic year coming up, especially when going through and doing your housing application, selecting your room preferences. But we always like to remind students just to keep an eye on those rates, especially if cost is a, is a factor for the room that you um, are interested in or just selecting your space, especially when room selection time comes around in February and March. Um, you know, for first years, for example, Towers is a more expensive option than JMAC and Halls because of the suite style of living. Um, and so we always just make sure that students have that information as early as possible so that they can make those decisions and kind of have that information before the room selection process starts. Um, so we publish our 2021 rates. Um, Typically, we'll publish our rates December, early January at the latest, so that's when we anticipate having our 2021 rates, but we always communicate that with parents, too, as they're calling or emailing or posting to the Facebook page. We also are on the parents' Facebook group um, just to give them a timeline and keep them updated on when that stuff's going to come out because we know that that is important numbers for everyone to consider. Um, and kind of along with room selection and room assignments is just keeping in mind the meal plan. You know, our, our incoming first years are required to have a 100 block or higher meal plan. Um, 
I had an unlimited meal plan when I started just to kind of get the feel of what my eating habits were gonna be and things like that. But you have the option to change every quarter by the first Thursday of classes if that makes sense. Um, students have the ability to change their meal plans if they'd like. So, you know, if you think, oh, fall quarter, you know, I really didn't use my meal plan all that much. I think I can drop down to a 125 or a 100 block. That is a, a price change as well. And so we can definitely process that for students, but just something to keep in mind. And then the last thing I wanted to cover is just the various resources that our students have for this um, or for this topic. Um, so first and foremost, we always encourage our students to uh, connect with their RAs when they get to campus. Uh, they can be a great resource for students if they have questions about various resources or if they're struggling, you know, whether it's with homesickness or, you know, I'm just not feeling well physically or, or you know, anything that it is, our RAs have probably heard it all. Um, and so they're just really great resources to help students, whether it's connecting them with financial aid or the bursar's office to say, you know, maybe you should chat with somebody to see what your options are, or you know, maybe they thought they think of something that you haven't thought of, and things like that. So we really, I think, financial aid and the bursar's office are the two that we typically see our staff members and our RAs referring folks to. Um, and then the other thing that we like to mention is just the food pantry that we have on campus, which is run through our office of sustainability. Um, so this is actually open for all of our DU community members who might be um, food insecure. So if they're just having issues providing food for themselves or themselves and their families, anything like that. This is meant to help kind of supplement that um, where people can go and pick up food as needed. Uh, right now, their drop-in hours are on Tuesdays from 4 to 8 p.m., but they're also available by request. Um, and you can email them to request a time to come and their email is sustainability at du.edu. But they're also, the sustainability folks have a tab on our housing page. So you can also find their contact information there and more information on the food pantry. But just like I said, things to keep in mind that kind of HRE is helping students with and kind of just the small role that we play in, in this little facet of being financially supported and whether that's supporting themselves or you all supporting them, um, these are just kind of the things that we always point to um, for our students. Um, and so if you all have any more questions or want any more information on anything talked about or, you know, if students have questions, feel free to email or call us. Our phone number is right there. It's 303-871-2246. Or you can email us housing at du.edu. One of our great student staff members will be happy to answer any questions you have. If they can't answer it, they'll get you in contact with the correct person or the right person to be able to give you all the information you're looking for. And that's all I've got. All right, great. I'm going to add one more thing. So I'm going to add one more thing before we open up Q&A. Um, in the packet, you did get a little bit of information about FERPA. FERPA is something you're going to hear a lot of us say, and that's definitely a conversation you want to have with your students because now that they're in college, they have to grant you access to their student records. So they can decide, I only want mom and dad to see um, or family members to see Billing information, I don't want them to see grades. If they don't fill out a FERPA release and you call my office or any other office, would be delighted to talk to you about the weather, how your favorite sports team is doing, uh, but we won't be able to give you any detailed information about your student account, um, your student's information. So I'd really encourage you to have those conversations with your students. Um, and when my kids were in school, I had financial information. I didn't have great information because I said to them, if something is going wrong, you better be calling me. I don't want to have to call the school. So just like I said, I, I like to call that a dinner table conversation. <laughs> okay, now we're ready. Questions okay. and answers. Yep, let's go to the Q&A. Looks like we have a couple here already. Uh, let's see. Does a 529 plan check have to be issued directly from the 529 plan to the university, or can the 529 come to the parent and then a personal check sent to the university? I, um, it actually is either preference. We get a tremendous amount of 529 um, plan checks directly from the administrators. We'd only ask that you um, please, please, please encourage those 529 administrators to include your student ID. But if your student, um, if your plan will send you a check and then you write us a check, 
that's perfectly fine too because i know some 529 plans really they almost want to pay the school and other ones are very good about just giving it to the parent um just make make sure if you get something a personal check to you you keep a record of that along with the bill because um the tax man might want to ask you for that information <laughs> Okay, the next one is, when and how will we know when financial aid grants and scholarships are applied? Will it be on the bill? When you receive your bill on, um, when the bills are generated on August 1st, you will see um, any aid that has been authorized. And what that means is that we're just waiting for the, um, the disbursement date. The federal government gives us very strict deadlines and dates when we can disperse financial aid, but we will see all of that on the bill and we'll even be nice enough to do the math for you. So if your charges are 20,000 and your student is getting 10,000 in aid, we'll tell you we only want 10,000 from you on the due date. So it's all on the bill. Um, let's see. Please repeat the name of the form that grants parents permission to view bills and etc. It's fondly known here as FERPA, which is the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act of 1974. And you can find more information about that at www.bu.edu slash registrar slash policy. And the students can go on to the, um, they can go on to the student tab to give you that permission and I'm trying to think where it is on the student tab. It's, um, oh, yeah, I would go to the registrar's office because right now I can't see the Pioneer web in my head, but I do know it's on the student page and they can say who gets access to what information and for how long. Um, question in regards to the packet. Was this packet sent out early one when they were accepted to the college or was there a packet sent recently? asking because I haven't seen anything in the mail recently. Um, the packages were sent at the end of June and they would have come from the bursar's office. So um, if you didn't get a packet, if you wanna call the bursar's office in the morning, we're, we're happy to mail something out to you. I, the, um, we also have a first time first year information page on our homepage and most of the handouts are there. So either way we can get you they're all lovely and color coded. And if you like to put things on the fridge, we can get you a set. So the next question looks like it applies to housing. My student just got put into a dorm room with two other students. Does that cost less? Um, I would shoot us an email to see um, what that's about. We actually don't have any triple rooms this year upcoming. So if they're in a room with two students, that is something we would like to know about. Um, unless you're thinking of a suite, depending on the building, I would be able to give you a little bit more information on that. Um, I can tell you that if, it, if they're an incoming first year student, um, Halls and JMAC cost less than Towers does. Um, I don't know the specific numbers off the top of my head, but those are posted on our website, du.edu slash housing. Under our resources tab, it should be the first link on the left that says 1920 rates. And you can go and look at, um, based off of what residence hall they were placed in, you can see what those rates would be. So you don't have to wait until the bill comes through. If you don't like to, um, you can have it right away. Uh, but definitely if you have more questions about being placed into the room with two other students, please reach out to us at um, uh, housing at du.edu or give us a phone call. And then our 2019 rates so yes, our 2019-2020 rates are on the website right now. And like I said, our 2021 rates will be posted end of December, early January at the latest. If a student is in the towers units, do pots, pans, silverware, plates, etc., come with a kitchen or does a student need to provide those? So students would need to provide those and get with, um, I, well, I would recommend at least just getting in contact with their um, roommate to see who's bringing what. That way, um, you know, I think a common thing is we have multiple students come on the first day who didn't necessarily communicate with their uh, their roommates or their suite mates and you know all four of them have brought a couple of sets of of silverware or things like that 
Now, mind you, I love having 35 spoons. That's my favorite thing because I use spoons a lot, but just in case they don't want to have that influx, um, they'll need to just communicate with, with their roommate and suite mates. But yes, I would bring pots, pans, and silverware and things like that. Um, there is an Ikea and a Bed Bath & Beyond close to campus um, and a Target, yes, and a Target just down the road. So um, there, and I know Bed Bath & Beyond does an option where you can order online and have them just waiting for you at the store. So that's definitely an option. But if you're just looking for kind of a cheaper option or, you know, just kind of things to get them through the academic year, I got my pots and pans at Ikea and it was amazing. <laughs> All right, here's a good question. Does the Parent PLUS loan automatically deduct from DU pay, or how does that work? Yeah, so any um, Parent PLUS loans are just like any other type of aid. It will show on the student bill, and it will deduct from what you owe us. Now, the one thing about Parent PLUS loans, if you think your student might be getting a refund based on that PLUS loan, federal regs say that you, the because the plus loan is coming out in your name, have to tell financial aid if you want the refund to go to you or directly to your student. And you can contact the um, financial aid office. Their website is du.edu slash finaid, F-I-N-A-I-D. And you'll be able to set up that option with them. All right, next question is, how warm are the dorms without air conditioning? Can the windows open? Yeah, so our residence halls that don't have air conditioning, um, typically you really only really only notice it the first week of school, so during that discoveries week for our first year students um, or during move-in week, and then the last week or two of school is when it tends to get pretty warm. The windows do open, so I, um, I lived in Centennial Halls my first year, and I got myself a dual kind of air mover fan um, that I just set on the windowsill with the windows open, and my roommate and I didn't really have any issues. It stayed pretty cool. Um, and two, I noticed that I wasn't really in my room all that often during the day when it was really hot. So we just shut our blinds or our curtains, um, and then it just, it was cool and, and bearable and comfortable by the end of the day when we were returning back. So um, yes, the windows open, it does get pretty warm, but it's not unbearable. And I recommend getting a good fan. <laughs> uh, my student is receiving the post 9-11 GI Bill. Would the tuition be same if my student decided 12 credit hours or 18 credit hours? Yes, the tuition charge is the same for students who are registered between 12 and 18 hours. We fondly refer to that as the flat rate. So um, what you will see on the student bill, regardless if they're registered for 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, you will see a charge for 12 credit hours. All right, at this point, we don't have any other questions coming in, but we'll hang out here for a minute and wait. If anybody has one of those lingering questions, just go ahead and pop it into the Q&A feature. Or if you think of something tomorrow, please feel free to call the Bursar's office. We're available um, for you. Lindsay's, uh, the housing will be available and financial aid is there too, so. That's nice, Tanya, we got your thank you. Okay, so the next question is, what is the most common meal plan? Yeah, so, that one's a difficult question to answer. Um, I think our most common right now is the 125 block, so one just under the unlimited meal plan. Um, I think it's just 
the student, you know, folks who hear unlimited are kind of like, oh, I don't really need that. Um, but we do have students who get it for the first quarter, at least. Uh, I think we see it. Most of our students have the unlimited during the fall quarter while they're figuring out, like I said, what their eating habits are, and how much they're spending on campus versus off campus, you know, their feel for the residence hall food or the dining hall food and, and things like that. But I would say our 125 is probably the most common overall, um, just for the students who are like, you know, I really don't need those unlimited meals and I don't need the guest passes. Um, I think 125 meals is great, but they still really like to have that meal plan cash, which is $215 this upcoming year. So um, 125 would be most common, but I see a lot of our first year students with the unlimited at least the first quarter. And can you change the plan at this point in time? I'm assuming that means the meal plan. Yes, at this point you can. Um, students can change their meal plans now through the first Thursday of classes, which I believe is September 12th this year. Um, and they can change it in a multitude of ways. The first and probably the quickest and easiest for you all would be, um, they can go to go dot du dot edu uh, slash change meal and they just log in with their pioneer web information and they can make that change and then it goes to my team to make those changes um, and the other option is they can come into the office um, and Nagel 136 is our housing office and they can fill out a paper form and then we process that form right there. And then the other option, if either of those aren't working, typically we have folks call in and say, hey, I'm having this issue, but I'm not able to make the change or anything. So at that point, we'll have them email us. But um, that Pioneer web change and the, the uh, physical form are probably the two most common. And any meal plan changes between now and July 30th will be reflected on that initial bill. If there are changes made in August, you can see it immediately on DU Pay, but it won't appear on an actual bill until September 1st. This next question is, would you recommend a student purchasing a parking permit even though they will not be staying on campus? Um, so I'm, uh, assuming so this is a commuter student um, yes I think that um, a student with especially if they have a full-time schedule they will definitely want to purchase a parking permit um, bu.edu slash parking is the website that you would go to to take a look at the different options that you have because the different parking lots have different pricing something to do with that to consider as well as I don't you know depending on how far away you are from a light rail station or anything like that um, students have their RTD pass and a lot of students if they want to forego the parking permit will park at their local or their closest light rail station and light rail in since we do have a DU light rail station that's so close to campus it lets off just by halls and towers so on the north end of campus so the next question is can you speak about the flex Account, how it works, etc. So the flex account is something that um, a student would give a you you or your student gives us funds at the at the ID card office. You can do it in person or via our website. And then flex account funds can be used for off campus dining. The meal plan cash that Lindsay referenced is only available for on campus. Um, if they do have flex and meal plan cash and they happen to be on campus, they just need to tell the cashier, and actually most of the cashiers ask, is this flex or meal plan cash? Um, so it really, and they can, they can use it for, actually that's because laundry's changing. So they can use it for off-campus dining is the most popular thing. And there, most of the restaurants around campus will take it. I always like to have a little flex uh, money on my card just in case you can't have one more meal in the residence halls you want to go run off and get a burrito or you're running late but you're close to the burgers and you want a bagel it's a great thing to have the big difference between the flex funds and meal plan cash meal plan cash expires every term so if they have $215 and they only use 200 of it that $15 just goes away with flex funds, if they have flex on their account, if you put $500 on at the beginning of fall quarter during discoveries, they only use 300 by the end of the year, 200 is available for them their second year. So it, um, it doesn't expire. They can also use it at the bookstore. 
So the parking website is um, bu.edu slash parking. And I'll put that into the, menu, the, um, the chat box there. Okay, we're just going to wait for a minute and see if any other questions come up. Right now, we don't have any other questions coming in. Uh, how would you apply money to a flex plan? If you go to du.edu slash pioneer card, on the left-hand side, there is a button that says manage my account. All you need is your student's ID number and you can add money to their account. You don't need a password or anything like that and it will show up instantly on their account. Um, there is one little, that website I like to say can be a little cranky. When it asks you for the billing address, you wanna make sure it's the billing address of your credit card. And when it asks you for the expiration date, it really does want that slash. But it's pretty easy and also during the year, your parent, your Students can log on to there and see how much money they have and it also tracks their meal plans, meal plan cash and their flex. And they can also send you a pre-worded email that says, please send more money. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is, is there any way to appeal room assignments at this point? Yeah, so if your student got a room assignment that they weren't particularly pleased with, if it wasn't their first option or if it wasn't their second option, they can definitely email us at housing at du.edu. Right now we've got what we're calling a wait list, but it's more like a preferences list. So folks get put on this list saying, I was placed in Towers, but I would prefer to live in JMAC. Um, and so we can put you down for that and say, you know, a student would prefer to live in JMAC if we have an open space that we think the student would fit with the other student who's in that room, then we'll go ahead and place them in there and email them of that change. Um, the other thing too, if it's two roommates who want to be placed in a different building, um, that one gets a little bit more tricky because we have to do a completely empty room and we don't really have those. Um, but we can definitely take the requests and put them on the list. Um, worst case scenario, we tell our folks, you know, if you don't get what you're looking for, come move in day. We do have a room change day on the third Friday of, of fall and winter quarter, excuse me, um, where it's kind of a no questions asked. You go in if there's an open space and you can move into that space or the student can move into that space um, and they just kind of go right on in there. Like I said, no questions asked. There's no conditions for that or anything like that. Um, but yes, right now we do have that process. Um, and like I said, if you want to do the request, you can email us. Um, at housing at du.edu. You can also call us at the 303-871-2246. I'll type it here in the chat as well. Um, typically email is a little bit faster for us right now, just we are getting a lot of phone calls about room assignments, which is normal. So if you call and, and you don't get to somebody right away, feel free to leave a voicemail or shoot us an email. Either way, we'll get back to you as, as fast as possible. I'm going to put these uh, numbers and email addresses in for you all as well. Oh, here's another question. Does the ID include access to sporting events or is that something else we have to sign up for? You don't have to sign up for it. The only tickets that I believe cost are for hockey games and that is something you have to do in, separate from the ID card. Uh, from the ID card. Here's another question. My student was approved for a parking permit. Will it come in the mail or receive it on campus? That's a great question. And I think you'll probably want to ask someone in the Parking and Mobility Services office. Um, if you go to their website, um, the general format is to find contact information over along the right side of the page. But I think we can probably get their, their direct number for you in just a moment. I got it. 
The direct phone number for parking is Okay, another question regarding sporting events. How would students go about getting tickets to the events? So you can purchase them online through the Ritchie Center's website if you're looking to get tickets to the hockey game or anything like that. But students who are on campus also have the ability to go to the will call office um, and they're just out. So the will call office is kind of on the outside and just when you walk in the main entrance facing the uh, facing Centennial Halls, there is a window there where students can go um, with their payment and with their um, student ID if they'd like and they can purchase the student discounted ticket if it's something that's paid, if it's something that um, students are able to access without paying for the sporting event, they just need to bring their DUID with them and they just get come in. Oh, that's the website for. I might have that answer for sure. We're going to see if we can find some um, information about contacting athletics and recreation. Yes, we do. Um, their direct number is 303 871 2275. Or the email is athletics at bu.edu. We don't have any other questions coming in at this point. And it seems like we're kind of getting off of the topic of student financial services into the general question area, which is just fine. Um, if you have more of these general questions, then um, you could also email them. Or if something comes up later on that you didn't think of at the time, you can email me at the email address parents at bu.edu. You could email the Bursar's office at bursar at bu.edu or housing at housing at bu.edu. And I have one more question that just popped in. Did the packet that you were talking about come addressed to the student or parent? I don't recall seeing the packet. It came addressed to the student at the um, mailing address that we have on file, and it was a fairly big envelope. So um, again, if you, if you didn't get one at your house, you can certainly call the Bursar's office and would be happy to send you out all the inserts and the information that was included in the packet. We printed plenty extra. Okay, everyone, um, I think that if there are no further questions at this time, we are going to go ahead and wrap up for the evening. I want to thank you very much for joining us for today's webinar. Next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, we will present the topic of student health and well-being, how DU helps students to maintain their physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Information on how to join that webinar is going to be posted on the parent Facebook group on our website and also emailed to all of you. And we hope you're able to join us next time on BU Wednesday webinars. Have a great evening, everybody. Look forward to seeing you at Discoveries. Yay! <laughs>